Let us move on to talk about the American Romanticism now and the key period, the designated period for the American Romanticism is from 1825 to 1865. This period is also known as uh, the American Renaissance and more popularly the age of transcendentalism. The key names and I am sure most of you are students of literature and you are aware of the key names Ralph Waldo Emerson, Thoreau, Walt Whitman, Herman Melville, Nathaniel Hawthorne and Edgar Allan Poe. Although there are other key names also. And so, interestingly both Emerson and Walt Whitman referred to America as a poem waiting to be written. Whitman called the expression of individual identity akin to national identity. American uh, Romanticism like its uh, English counterpart was again a revolt against the age of reason and rational and scientific spirit of the particular period. We have to remember that reason played an important part in the American Revolution and the Declaration of um, Independence. You also have to remember Thomas Paine's pamphlet Common Sense which was published in 1776, a work that challenged the authority of the British uh, monarchy and the British government. So, if we look at the key distinctions between the age of reason and uh, romanticism, this is what we get. The age of reason is all about rationality, control, conformity, order and it is quite mechanical. On the other hand, romanticism is all about imagination expression of individuality, spontaneity and it is also extremely organic as opposed to the mechanical aspect of the age of reason. The key elements of the romantic literature or uh, the period or the age of romanticism. So, literature was highly subjective as in Britain as in English literature. It was saturated with emotional intensity. The idea was that common man could be the hero and nature was a place of refuge. The romantics valued nature as opposed to social order. The American romantics valued spiritual intuition and self-reliant individualism. These are the key words that we should remember. Individualism, self-reliance and spiritual intuition. Uh, a key literary device as we remember from the English romanticism also is that of pathetic fallacy where nature is not just a passive observer, but is sympathetic to people. The romantics propose certain realistic techniques such as the use of local color. For example, uh, the down to earth characters like uh, the rustic characters in William Wordsworth and also the colloquial language in Walt Whitman. So, the importance of the local color. Let us move on to talk about Walt Whitman 1817 to 1892. He was a poet whose major poem was a Song of Myself and also his seminal work leaves of grass, where he declared a poet's manifesto. He said that the new American poet would create new forms and subjects um, and uh, new subject matter for poetry, rejecting conventional language and rhyme. So, insistence on a new kind of subject matter that has not been dealt with before and uh, uh, he is one of the key practitioners, well, let us just say a pioneer in the use of free verse in poetry. I will read out a couple of lines from Walt Whitman. A child said, what is the grass fetching it to me with full hands? 
how could I answer the child? I do not know what it is any more than he. I guess it must be the flag of my disposition out of hopeful green stuff woven. Or I guess it is the handkerchief of the Lord, a scented gift and rememberer designedly dropped. Bearing the owner's name some way in the corners that we may seek and remark and say whose. Or I guess the grass is itself a child, the produce babe of the vegetation. Or I guess it is a uniform hieroglyphic and it means sprouting alike in broad zones and narrow zones, growing among black folks as among white, Canuck, Tokaho, Congressman, Cuff, I give them the same, I receive them the same. What does it mean? It just means that insistence on subject matter which was hitherto unknown or unfamiliar to uh, the Americans and also again uh, look at the similarity between the English Romanticism and the American Romanticism, uh, spontaneous emotions, uh, foregrounding a child that is innocence and uh, taking into account or being very inclusive the white, the black, the congressman and all kinds of people. So, this is exactly what the romantics were doing in England as well. So, other writers of the age include William Cullen Bryant, Washington Irving, uh, I am sure most of you remember Washington Irving and his gothic tale of uh, the Sleepy Hollow and also Rip Van Winkle. Uh, H. W. Longfellow, Margaret Fuller, James Fenimore Cooper, remember the word noble savage is often associated with Fenimore and his Natibumpa novels and Harriet Beecher Stowe, very popularly known or remembered for her Uncle Tom's Kevin. Now, uh, one of the most important figures of um, uh, the American Romanticism is Emerson Ralph Waldo Emerson 1803 to 1882. He was the person who ushered in American Romanticism and a leading exponent of transcendentalism. Uh, his works influence people such as Walt Whitman, Thoreau and also the great poet Emily Dickinson. In Europe, uh, he had a formative influence on people like George Eliot and also Nietzsche. Emerson's essay, Nature, bears testimony to his romantic worldview and expresses several of his ideas on individualism. As was prevalent in the works of uh, the Romantics, Emerson believed that nature is perceptible only to the eye and heart of the child and someone who has retained the spirit of infancy. So, innocence is important, return to nature is important. So, nature is part of God. For Emerson, the whole of nature is a metaphor of the human mind. The relation between the mind and matter is not fancied by some poets, but it stands in the will of God and so is free to be known by all men. In his seminal essay, The American Scholar, uh, which was actually a lecture delivered before the Phi Beta Kappa Society in 1837, Emerson called for distinctively American writing free from European influence. It was a call for Americans to trust their individuality and act as noble representatives to the world. The major influence on this scholar included not only nature, but also the mind of the past. Um, you can connect and associate Emerson's thoughts to that of T. S. Eliot's in uh, tradition and the individual talent. Elias suggested that uh, the individual writer should subordinate himself to the mind of Europe to tradition. 
whereas for Emerson the mind of the past being restrictive is exactly what contemporary writers must transcend, go beyond and express the reality of their own period. Emerson's most fundamental premise is there is one man, ok. So, all, all men can be rolled into one man and the final influence on the scholar is action. Without action as Emerson says, he is not yet man, without it thought can never ripen into truth. Also, let us uh, recall Amer uh, Emerson's very important, very influential essay, Self Reliance, where he proclaims whoso would be a man must be a non conformist. So, remember all these ideals return to nature, uh, foregrounding the child and childlike innocence, um, individuality, self reliance, and non conformity. These are key elements of uh, American thought and American literature and much of it can be traced back to Ralph Waldo Emerson and his thoughts. Let us move on to talk about Henry David Thoreau 1817 to 1862. He was an essayist, poet, philosopher and mystic. He was a keen observer of nature, a lover of solitude and an exponent of the simple life. In his very long treatise or essay, Civil Disobedience, which was uh, a great influence on Mahatma Gandhi also and his concept of civil disobedience. Um, so, Thoreau's work was published in 1849 and very famously says that government is best which governs not at all. In his Walden published in 1854, Thoreau shows us a template for an authentic life that can be lived if one lives a simple life free of materialism. In Thoreau's writings, the writer becomes one with nature and the ecological and the emotional and spiritual unite. Nathaniel Hawthorne, another important figure of this age. 1804 to 1864 and uh, mostly remembered today for the scarlet letter. So, he drew upon Emerson's theories, enlightenment philosophy and Coleridge's views on imagination. Along with Herman Melville, Hawthorne derided the twin issues of industrialization and commercialism. So, mechanism and commercialism he was opposed to that in American society. The two recurring themes of his works are obsession with sin and guilt and the idea of redemption. Hawthorne was the first great writer in the American tr uh, tradition of psychological and subjective fiction. We move on to the great Edgar Allan Poe. 1809 to 1849, who was a poet, short story writer and occasional critic as well. His major works are The Fall of the House of Usher 1839, The Murders in the Rue Morgue 1841, The Telltale Heart 1843 and The Raven 1845. Poe followed the close analysis of a work and uh, in his seminal essay, The Philosophy of Composition published in 1846, he explains the process of writing the raven. He explains that instead of working in a fine frenzy of ecstatic intuition, a poet chooses a consistent emotional atmosphere that takes primacy over incident, character and versification. In his uh, The Poetic Principle published in 1850, he asserts that aesthetic appreciation rather than didactic purpose was of chief literary value. So, therefore, people like uh, Baudelaire, uh, a key symbolist and um, writer of the aesthetic movement, uh, 
he uh, was in extremely influenced by Pope and also translated Poe's works uh, in the French language. So, Poe states that the death of a beautiful woman is the most poetical topic in the world. His reviews of Nathaniel Hawthorne's tales offer his most celebrated views of the genre of prose fiction. Like many romantic authors, Poe also objected to allegory, the use of allegory. Okay. It should be a work of art, should be as realistic as possible, that is what he felt and he was not in the favor of allegory and that is what Nathaniel Hawthorne was generally associated with. Um, coming back to uh, Poe's assertion that uh, death of a beautiful woman can be the key inspiration for a poem. Let me read out a couple of lines from his celebrated Annabel Lee, 1849. And uh, um, Poe himself lost his wife, Virginia, to tuberculosis. Uh, she was very young when she died. And uh, um, Poe's uh, biographies tell us that uh, he was devastated after Virginia's death. So, let us look at Annabel Lee. Annabel Lee. 1849. For the moon never beams without bringing my dreams of the beautiful Annabel Lee. And the stars never rise, but I feel the bright eyes of the beautiful Annabel Lee. And so all the night tide I lie down by the side of my darling, my darling, my life and my bride in her sepulchre there by the sea, in her tomb by the sounding sea. In tale writing, Nathaniel Hawthorne po points out Hawthorne's lack of originality and his dependence on allegory. And as we have already seen that Poe was not too much in favor of allegories. So, then what is romanticism all about? The primary feature of American romanticism is the celebration of individualism, spontaneity, deep emotions, subjectivity non-conformity and celebrating the sublime. Nature is foregrounded and also the romantics asserted the importance of the individual, the unique, even occasionally the eccentric. Consequently, they oppose the character typology of new classical drama. In another way, of course, romanticism created its own literary types most predominantly the individualists. But individualism also leads to isolation. Uh, for example, let us assume how Emerson writes in American Scholar about uh, imitation and parroting and he looks inward to find divine essence which he claims we all share in common. Thoreau too isolated himself and um, purified himself at Walden Pond. Poe was notorious for habitually uh, portraying um, aristocratic hypersensitive madman in gothic enclosures and Herman Melville invests Ahab uh, from his immortal Moby Dick, Ahab a captain of a fishing boat with a Homer like or Shakespearean grandeur like qualities. Okay. So, um, let me read you uh, a couple of lines from Melville's Moby Dick and the idea of um, extreme subjective emotions, also uh, an individual, an eccentric. So, this is what, this is how Ahab is described. Uh, so, this is how Melville describes Captain Ahab in Moby Dick. He looked like a man cut away from the stake when the fire has overrunningly wasted all the limbs without consuming them or taking away one particle from their compacted aged robustness. His whole high broad form seemed made of solid bronze and shaped in an unalterable mold like Cellini's cast Perseus. Threading its way out from among his grey hairs and continuing uh, 
right down one side of his tawny scorched face and neck till it disappeared in his clothing, you saw a slender rod like mark lividly whitish. It resembled that perpendicular seam sometimes made in the straight lofty trunk of a great tree when the upper lightning tearingly darts down it and without wrenching a single twig peels and grooves out the bark from top to bottom air running off into the soil leaving the tree still greenly alive but branded. Whether that mark was born with him or whether it was the scar left by some desperate wound no one could certainly say. So, extremely subjective and also the idea of uh, uh, creating a highly unique kind of an individual or the hallmark of American romanticism. Other instances of uniqueness in American romantic period, let us consider how Emily Dickinson never wanted to go public by publishing her verse and also Whitman who embraced the democratic masses, yet he calls his major poem Song of Myself. So, the idea of stark individualism prevails throughout the major works of the American Romanticism. So, to sum up, what was American Romanticism and its tenets? There was a belief in natural goodness of man that man in a state of nature would behave well, but is often hindered by civilization. Uh, there is also uh, an emphasis on sincerity, spontaneity and faith in emotions. Also the belief that what is special in a man is to be valued over what is representative and there, there was also uh, a chief delight in self analysis. There is also affirmation of the values of democracy and the freedom of the individual. I hark back to Percy Bysshe Shelley, who, uh, who famously stated the function of the sublime is to persuade us to end the slavery of pleasure, and that is what, and that is perhaps what a writer's job is and that is what the romantics try to do. We cannot complete a lecture on romanticism and not discuss Harold Bloom, one of the most uh, important and influential critic of our times. So, Harold Bloom, critic and scholar uh, concluded a defense of the tradition of romantic poetry, particularly against the efforts of the new critics. He has written three books on romantic poetry, Shelley's Myth Making, The Visionary Company and Blake's Apocalypse. In Blake's Apocalypse, he conducts several readings of Blake's prophetic poetry. In 1967, he wrote a visionary, that is Bloom wrote a visionary poem the covering sherub or poetic influence. The poem is a sort of uh, a waking dream that foregrounds poet's quest uh, romance and revisits Bloom's interpretation of Blake's prophecies. Bloom's Romanticism and Consciousness uh, published in 1970 is an important collection of essays including Bloom's own the internalization of Quest romance in his Anxiety of Influence published in 1973. Bloom challenges the accepted notion that literary tradition is a benign and empowering source of influence on modern poets. Instead, Bloom argues for poets since Milton, the achievements of their great precursors are barriers to their own aspirations to originality. So, again you can connect this to Eliot's tradition and uh, Emerson's The American Scholar. As we conclude, here is a list of reading list that you can please refer to. M. H. Abrams, The Mirror and the Lamp, also M. H. Abrams, Natural Supernaturalism, Harold Bloom's The Visionary Company, Marshall Brown, The Cambridge History of Literary Criticism, 
volume 5 romanticism, Douglas Bush mythology and the romantic tradition in English poetry, Marilyn Butler romantics rebels and reactionaries, English literature and its background, Paul de Maud, the rhetoric of romanticism and here is uh, an important um, web resource that you can use. Thank you very much. See you in the next class.